Carrie Natto, The End of Food Allergy, The First Program to Prevent and Reverse a 21st Century Epidemic. Welcome to a transformative journey in understanding food allergies and how they can be prevented and reversed. This book summary of The End of Food Allergy dives deep into the groundbreaking research of allergist Gideon Lack and his hypothesis that early exposure to allergens is, in fact, beneficial in reducing the risk of developing food allergies. The summary will unravel the worldwide epidemic of food allergies, trace the historical background of these allergies, and investigate the role of genetics, environmental factors, and skin conditions like eczema in their development. Finally, we'll explore the revolutionary treatment of oral immunotherapy, its benefits and drawbacks, and the promising future of alternative solutions in combating food allergies. The Revolutionary Hypothesis on Food Allergies Pediatric allergist Gideon Lack discovers a groundbreaking hypothesis that challenges the conventional wisdom on food allergies. Lack found that early exposure to peanuts could prevent peanut allergies in children. He stumbled upon this theory during a trip to Tel Aviv, where he observed that Israeli babies were eating peanut-containing food at a significantly higher rate than British babies. This discovery led him to question the standard medical advice of not feeding babies peanuts, which apparently was not working. After extensive research, Lack confirmed that early exposure to peanuts can reduce the risk of developing peanut allergies. The hypothesis challenged the prevailing belief and opened up possibilities for studying other food allergies. The Global Problem of Food Allergies Food allergies are not just a problem in the US and UK, but a global issue affecting both children and adults at an alarming rate. The rise in peanut allergies is only a part of the bigger picture, as all eight common food allergens are claiming more and more victims, and rates of food allergies are on the increase globally. Fresh thinking is needed to address this major problem. Unlocking the mystery of food allergies Food allergies have been around for centuries, and many factors contribute to their occurrence. The body's immune system mistakes certain food proteins as dangerous foreign substances, triggering various physical responses that lead to allergic reactions. Genetics, environmental changes, diets, and lifestyles, along with their effects on our gut bacteria, may play a role in the rising prevalence of food allergies. However, no single theory can fully explain this phenomenon, and the complexity suggests there is no simple answer. Understanding Gideon Lack's hypothesis is crucial to the bigger puzzle, but it is just one piece of the ongoing research on food allergies. Early Exposure and Peanut Allergies Lack and his colleagues conducted research on 8,826 Jewish children in both Israel and the UK to discover if early exposure to peanuts affected the development of peanut allergies. They ruled out many possible explanations for peanut allergies, including genetics and asthma. Additionally, they found a link between eczema and a risk for developing peanut allergies. Lack and his team were able to establish their proposition that early exposure to peanuts can result in a reduced likelihood of a peanut allergy. Skin, a gateway to food allergies. Our skin may be one of the primary conduits for developing food allergies, according to the dual allergen exposure theory. Eczema weakens the skin and makes it more permeable, increasing the risk that peanut proteins can enter through the skin and trigger an allergic reaction. Peanut residue can also cling to household dust and linger on skin and saliva, posing a risk to young children. Once the immune system sees these proteins as harmful foreign invaders, it may trigger an allergic reaction. The Dual Allergen Exposure Theory The Dual Allergen Exposure Theory suggests that the tendency to avoid feeding infants food containing potential allergens could be the cause of food allergies. Gideon Lack hypothesized that eating allergenic food helps babies' immune systems learn to perceive them as friends instead of foes. Avoiding that food could teach the immune system to perceive those allergens as enemies, causing food allergies. This hypothesis contradicts decades of medical advice, which advised mothers to avoid eating allergenic food during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Instead, Lack suggested that parents should try to include allergenic foods in their babies' diets. 
The implications of this if lack was correct would be enormous. Preventing peanut allergies. The LEAP study confirms that early exposure to peanuts can prevent babies from developing peanut allergies. The study involved 640 infants who were split into two groups with one being fed peanuts and the other avoiding it completely. Five years later, the peanut-eating group had fewer cases of peanut allergies, proving Lack's hypothesis to be correct. Mixed results in follow-up studies on allergy prevention. After the success of the LEAP study on peanut allergies, several follow-up studies were conducted on other food allergies. The EAT study confirmed the safety of introducing babies to sesame, milk, fish, eggs, and wheat during the first six months of their lives. However, an analysis failed to establish a clear benefit to feeding them such food. For egg allergies, most studies supported the LEAP study's findings, but some showed mixed results. The Petit and Heap studies, in particular, resulted in children being hospitalized due to allergic reactions. In conclusion, while introducing babies to allergenic food seems to be a good idea, parents must still consult with doctors before doing so. Fighting food allergies with oral immunotherapy. There is evidence that avoiding allergenic food in babies' diets is not the best approach to prevent food allergies, and early food introduction is better. Moreover, oral immunotherapy, OIT, offers exciting possibilities to treat already existing allergies. The process involves gradually increasing the amount of the allergen the patient consumes over a long period until they become desensitized. Although the treatment is not easy, some patients want to reach a point where they can tolerate trace amounts of the allergen. Others aim to tolerate entire servings. Good news and bad news about OIT. OIT, or oral immunotherapy, is highly effective in treating food allergies, but completing treatment can be difficult and time-consuming. Each treatment session involves the clinician pushing the patient's immune system to the brink of triggering an allergic reaction to the food in question. However, the use of drugs like omelizumab can speed up the process, making reactions milder and less frequent. Alternative treatments also show promise, such as food allergy vaccines and gene therapy. Despite the challenges, OIT is becoming less demanding, dangerous, and time-consuming, offering hope to those who suffer from food allergies. In concluding our exploration of the end of food allergy, we learn that a paradigm shift is needed in how we approach food allergies, exposing infants to allergens early and strategically, rather than living in avoidance. Gideon Lack's groundbreaking research on allergen exposure and the success of the LEAP study demonstrate that early introduction is the key to mitigating children's risk of developing peanut allergies, with implications for other types of allergies as well. However, it's vital to remember that many factors contribute to food allergies, and a holistic approach is necessary. It's an era of exciting advancements in food allergy treatments and preventative strategies, with oral immunotherapy becoming more accessible and alternative treatments on the horizon. The key takeaways from this book summary are the potential power of early allergen exposure, the significance of a multidimensional approach to understanding food allergies, and the promising future of treatments and prevention.